Hello everyone and welcome to episode 37 of the James Layton Fitness Podcast. Now in today's episode we're going to be discussing weightlifting equipment and a few different pieces of equipment that, in my opinion, would be extremely beneficial. Now a couple of them are a little bit more expensive than the others, however two of them are, are exceptionally cheap. However, if you're an intermediate to advanced trainee and you're very serious about your training, I certainly do think that some of these pieces of equipment would be excellent investment and two of them in particular really do make a huge difference within certain exercises. So we'll quickly run through the pieces of equipment and then I'm going to go through each one individually and hopefully this will really, really help you a lot because as soon as I personally send my clients started implementing some of these pieces of equipment for certain lifts like I said it does make a big difference so the pieces of equipment are squat shoes, a weightlifting belt, chalk or liquid chalk, uh, lifting straps and wrist straps so those are the pieces of equipment and like I said I'm going to go through each one individually so hopefully this will really help you out and hopefully you might be able to pick up a few of these which you haven't already got and start implementing within some of your sessions so the first one is squat shoes and the reason why these are so beneficial for squats is basically if you're currently using running shoes for your squats the biggest problem with this is the sole so because it's got a flat sole and two because there's air within the sole and the sole can compress this can obviously leak power during the squat now this is obviously excellent for when you're doing running however when you're doing squats this is an idea we want a nice stable base and that's why a squat shoe is an excellent investment so basically because the squat shoe is exceptionally firm at the bottom there's no air inside it, it cannot be compressed and in, in addition to that it actually has a raised heel so because it has this raised heel this basically positions the heel of your foot slightly higher than the front of the foot and this really allows you to get better depth during the squat and you're probably listening to this thinking uh, how much does a, a pair of squat shoes really make in the squat and if I'm honest it actually does make a huge difference and it's certainly worth trying out. Unfortunately, the squat shoes can be quite expensive, but there's some cheaper options on the market as well. However, I cannot tell you how many pit times I've seen people transition from a, a running shoe to a squat shoe, and the difference it really does make is quite significant. And pretty much anyone that I've spoken to who's transitioned to a squat shoe has never transitioned back to a running shoe. So certainly recommend doing some research online. The ones I have are the Adidas Weightlifting 2.0, which I think are a good option because even though they're expensive, they're a little bit more middle of the road than some of the extremely expensive Adi Power ones and the, there's a pair of Nike ones which have pretty much doubled the price. So Adi, Adidas Weightlifting 2.0, I think that's the name. If you Google that, you can grab a pair of those. Now the next piece of equipment I'm going to discuss is a weightlifting belt. Now, probably wondering why would you need a belt? So the reason is, for exercises like squats and deadlifts, we can increase intra-abdominal pressure. And ultimately this can really help with strength gains within the squat and the deadlift. And again, look at the squat shoes, you'd be amazed how much difference this really does make. However, a couple of recommendations if you're going to to get a belt, make sure it's a belt that is the same thickness all the way around the belt. So you'll see some of the cheaper versions and they're thinner at the front and then thicker at the back. You really want a belt that has the same thickness all the way around. The belt I have is very similar to the Inza belt. It's a replica. I think I got it from the strength shop If you type in uh, Inza belt strength shop you'll see the replica online i do really recommend that particular one again relatively expensive but certainly an excellent investment and for squats and deadlifts the great thing about it is you can essentially push your stomach up against the belt when you're doing both of these lifts and that cue in itself really is a great feeling that you feel so much tighter within the lift whereas if you don't use a belt don't have that same intra-abdominal pressure. That's not to say you don't have to use a belt, but it does make a huge difference, especially when looking at strength gains for both of the lifts. So certainly you suggest checking out. The reason why I didn't get the Inza belt, which is pretty much acclaimed as one of the best belts in the market, basically because it comes from the US, the postage and packaging is incredibly expensive. And 
that's the reason why I went for this one from the strength shop. Another one of my clients has recently bought one of these. It's a really, really good quality belt. The next thing we're going to talk about is chalk and liquid chalk. I personally use the liquid chalk. I think I got mine from myprotein.co.uk. It's very cheap. It's only about five pounds. And again, very useful for deadlifts. And even arguably, you could use this for any of your lifts because uh, a better grip is pretty much going to help you with any exercise whatsoever. Certainly your bigger lifts um, where grip can be an issue, so deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, uh, stiff leg deadlifts, any type of heavy rowing movements, so dumbbell rows, barbell rows, panne rows, uh, pull ups, chin ups, anything like that can be really useful. The great thing about the liquid chalk is it's nowhere near as messy. So basically it goes in your hand as a liquid, you rub it in and it basically creates that chalk like texture. But it's nowhere near as messy. So take a look at that, it's only useful investment. Now the thing is weightlifting straps. Now this is a little bit of a grey area. Some people like to recommend these, some people don't. The point I'd make is I personally see them as a useful tool. I have used them in the past for deadlifts, however, I like to use more chalk now. And the reason why I personally see them as a useful tool is we need to realise that most people look listening to this podcasts are not powerlifters, we're people looking to enhance our physiques and if the grip is a limiting factor using straps can be a very useful tool to basically allow you to use more weight which is obviously a big positive. So again these are probably two three pounds, I think I got mine from Amazon, if you type that into Amazon they're weightlifting straps, you'll see lots of variations, there's no real big difference between any of them on the market. But again, for things like your rows, pull-ups, chin-ups, lap pull-down, some people may want to use these, some people may not. But it's certainly an option, and I personally it's a useful thing to have in your bag. Final thing to talk about is uh, wrist wraps. These are slightly different. Essentially, they're just wraps that go around your wrist, and they can help essentially just support the lifts, especially for your pressing movements. So any bench press, dumbbell, chest press, anything like that. I typically don't use these and I haven't done for a long time, but I have done in the past when my wrists were a little bit weaker. And they certainly helped a lot, especially when I had a small wrist injury. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, that's probably not the best way to go about it because you need to actually see the root cause of the problem. But as a temporary solution, they really were useful. So if you have a little bit of wrist injury, in addition to seeing a specialist about how to improve the injury it can be a useful short-term solution so again if you looked on amazon probably get them on you probably get them under a fiver but hopefully this has been useful and these are certain things a lot of people don't seem to talk about but certainly all of these can be very useful to have in your gym bag especially if you're serious if you're someone that is maybe a beginner probably the squat shoes and lifting that probably are quite expensive to to start using however if you're an intermediate or advanced trainer these are I pretty much say mandatory especially if you're an advanced person who's really really into lifting weights improving their physique and you'll be surprised how much stronger you'll be with the squat shoes but in addition look at the straps wraps and the liquid chalk so thank you very much for listening if you're still yet to download my free ebook how to set up a nutrition plan go to james layton l-a-y-t-o-n thinnest.co.uk and you can download that immediately also visit my site to see all of the rest of the podcast episodes or find the rest of the podcast episodes on iTunes remember to subscribe also look at my website for all the various videos I have and to learn more about my products and services I have done okay thank you very much guys I look forward to speaking to you next week take care